understanding my child better, communicating with uh, them better, and uh, better discipline, so that when they're naughty, I can discipline them, discipline them appropriately. How about you ask me if we can go to the park, but use a pleasant voice, okay? Pretty mum, can we go down to the park? <laughs> that was lovely. Well done. Here you are. You can have a smiley face because you used your pleasant voice. One of the advantages of a behaviour chart, it's a way of both reminding the parent to be positive and to tune into uh, the child doing the right thing, but it's also a way of providing children with feedback about their behaviour. So a sticker chart that focuses on children speaking in a nice voice, using a pleasant voice, uh, can often be very effective in dealing with whinging and whining because it focuses the child's attention and the parent's attention on catching the child doing well or doing the appropriate thing. Um, I've got a five and a half year old and I'm just going to the self-esteem side of it. When I, it's usually after school, but when I like praise them for doing something, whether it's making a cool Lego car or whatever, yeah. every now and then he'll throw and I know it's not, I'm useless, yeah. and puts himself down. Mm -hmm. And I try the positive, you know, no you're not, <coughs> and it just escalates and gets worse. Rightio, what you might be um, in is what we call the reassurance trap. And how this works is that when sometimes kids are anxious about things, if you try to reassure them that everything is all right, rather than make the anxiety go, go away, it actually contributes to it. Triple P is constantly developing, constantly evolving. We've started to stop talking about the Triple P program, the Positive Parenting Program as a program, and refer to it as a system, because it's really a number of programs. We have Triple P variants now, the programs that specifically targeted at teenagers, specifically targeted at young children, at, at, at what we call um, infants, infant triple P. We have a baby triple P that's almost ready, which is actually antenatal triple P. Um, at the um, other end of the life scale, we have a, a grandparent's triple P that's in development at the moment, recognising the fact that uh, in many um, parts of the world, including Australia, a lot of the primary child rearing is being done by the grandparent rather than the parent. Do a little rain check on what your kids hear you saying. If you come home from work or uni or whatever you're doing and all they hear is whinging and moaning and complaining about workmates, workloads, difficult, unreasonable, demanding people who are making life a misery for you, um, children learn that it's okay to criticise others. It's okay to be negative and, you know, we can think of this as downloading and, and you know, sort of having a little whinge and a, a moan and a complain. Um, and, you know, you think, okay, no big deal. But never forget what our children are listening to and what these messages are telling them about their world. One of the most frustrating issues that parents can face is bullying. Parents can feel helpless and not know how to assist their children to change. Triple P is currently developing a specific program for the whole family to tackle childhood bullying behaviour. It's about a 12-session um, a program, so it's actually quite an intensive program, but it very much specifically relates to teaching kids the skills they need to make good friendships, and which is sort of taking the more positive spin of dealing with bullying because one of the things that protects kids from being bullied is having good friends. And the more friends kids have, the less likely they are to be bullied or to bully themselves. In general, the lighter touch or low intensity programs are really good for parents who've got one or two specific concerns with their children, but there are not major, major behavioural problems or emotional problems yet. So the seminar series, the parent discussion groups are very good for parents who have some concerns about their children's behaviour, but it hasn't reached the point where um, it's, it's a major problem or the child has developed serious difficulties at school. 
The more intensive programs, um, this is these are the group triple P and the standard triple P, which is the one-on-one -on -one more intensive program, and the enhanced versions of triple P are really there for parents who are qu really quite worried about their children. Um, Problems have developed uh, over a period of time, so the child may not only be uh, disobedient and challenging, but, but perhaps aggressive. Uh, they may have what's called a disruptive behaviour difficulty, uh, such as an oppositional defiant behaviour problem, or a conduct disorder, or a child may have ADHD, which is attention deficit hyperactivity uh, disorder. Uh, if a child has a clinical diagnosis of a major behavioural and emotional problem, then generally the level 4 and level 5 of our intervention system is most appropriate for those families. When parents are, become parents, there's not necessarily something innate in them that means they know all the answers or that all the answers reside with their parents or, or whoever's giving them advice on parenting. That there are scientifically proven ways to be an effective parent. Many would agree that Triple P can change the world with its parenting techniques and advice. But is Professor Sanders in agreement? If anything can change the world, it's parenting children well. And if we can have kids growing up in ha happy, healthy, positive environments in their home, it gives them a very good foundation in life. It gives them the kind of social and emotional skills that they need to do well. And when this happens, this is an extremely positive thing that can happen in the community. Thanks for joining me in discovering some leading social science in practice that originated here in Australia and has been taken to the world. Something that is dear to many of us, techniques for better parenting. I hope you've enjoyed this series. We've covered a lot of ground. There's really a huge amount of innovative and exciting science and technology going on in Queensland at the universities, in research institutes and in businesses. I do hope this series has encouraged you and your family to perhaps utilise National Science Week and other methods to find out more. As we close, a special thank you must go to all our sponsors, the Australian Institute for Commercialisation, the Medical Engineering Research Facility at QUT, UniQuest from the University of Queensland, the Queensland Police Service, Forensic Services Branch, 31 Digital and of course the Federal Department of Innovation, Industry, Science and Research through National Science Week. I've enjoyed being your host. Good night. Mm -hmm.